So we're going to go ahead and finish up this problem, which we started in the previous video. So this was problem two from section 8.4. Okay, so we had just found the critical values. So now part C is asking us to find the standardized test statistic. And we entered the number of successes and the sample size for each of the two samples. Okay, so now we're going to select the appropriate symbols for the null and alternative hypotheses. Okay, so we can't really change the symbol in the null hypothesis. All right, so uh, the alternative hypothesis is that the difference between the two proportions is not equal to zero, so make sure that's selected. All right, and we can do an optional p-value plot. Let's click Compute. Okay, so it's going to summarize uh, the type of test that you did. So we're testing the difference between two population proportions. And then it tells you um, the sample sizes of each sample and then the number of successes in each sample, along with the difference between the sample proportions. So P1 hat minus P2 hat is equal to 0 0.12. Okay, and what we're looking for is a standardized test statistic, so, so the Z step, and we're gonna go ahead and round it to two decimal places. So round it to two decimal places, it's 2.28. Okay, and I've already entered that number uh, in, in for the answer for part C. So 2.28 was the correct answer. Okay, then in part D, uh, it says decide whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so remember, um, uh, this was a two-tail test, okay, which means that um, the rejection regions are in the tails of the probability distribution. Okay, so in the previous part of this problem, right, we determined the critical values and then the rejection regions. So the rejection region in the left tail is less than negative 1.70. Okay, likewise, the rejection region in the right tail is greater than 1.70. Okay, so remember, these were the critical values we found previously. Okay, so our test statistic ended up being 2.28. Okay, if your test statistic is between these two values, right, either greater than negative 1.70, right, or less than 1.70, right, then and then you do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, but very clearly 2.28 is greater than 1.70. So our test statistic is in the rejection region. Okay, so we reject the null hypothesis because the test statistic is in the rejection region. Okay, so read those answer choices carefully and select the best one. Okay, this was the correct answer choice for part D. All right, and then lastly in part E, okay, it's asking you to interpret the, de the decision in the context of the original claim. Okay. So in this problem, the claim um, is given by the null hypothesis, right? So we assume there's no difference in, in the percent of females enrolled in college and the percent of males enrolled in college, okay, from the population of all high school graduates. Okay, so P1 minus P2 equals zero is the claim of the problem, which is the null hypothesis. Okay, so since we reject the null hypothesis in, in favor of the alternative, Okay, what that means is, is that there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim that there is no difference okay, in the percent of females who are enrolled in college okay, compared to the percent of males. So I'm just going to reword that. So compared to the percent of males who are also enrolled in college. Okay, so we are rejecting the null hypothesis in favor of the uh, in favor of the alternative hypothesis right saying that 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 there is a difference okay between the percent of females enrolled in college and the percent of males enrolled in college okay so go ahead and read this carefully in part e and then select the best one okay so uh so at the nine percent level of significance right there's sufficient evidence to reject the claim Okay, and that was uh, uh, that was the correct answer for part E, and we've uh, successfully completed problem two in the homework for section eight point four. Okay, so before I move on to the next example, um, let me let me mention a couple of things. Okay, so again, if it was difficult to um, uh, decide whether to reject the null hypothesis, okay, based on our test statistic. And then your your answer uh, choice in the previous question, okay, where where you were asked to identify the rejection regions in the test. You remember, it's always a good idea to draw a picture, okay. So since we use the normal distribution calculator to get these critical values for the test, 
Okay, remember the normal distribution is um, is bell-shaped and symmetric. Okay. Um, okay, so so basically you can draw a bell-shaped curve. Okay, and knowing that, and understanding that the test is two-tailed. Okay, this is a two-tailed test, right? You you have two rejection regions, right? One in the left tail of the graph, and the other one, the other one in the right tail. Okay, and your critical values are the cutoff points for the rejection region. Okay, okay so if your test statistic is less than negative 1.70, it's in the rejection region. If it's greater than 1.70, it's also in the rejection region. But if it's between these two values, it's not in the rejection region. So the rejection regions are shaded in red. Okay, so our test statistic is 2.28. Okay, so, so think of this as a number line. So this is z equals 0 in the middle. Okay, so this is the standard normal curve. Okay, this is the left critical value, this is the right critical value. So very clearly, 2.28 is to the right of 1.70, which puts it in the rejection region. So, so that's why we, we rejected the null hypothesis. Now, if your test statistic was between the two critical values for a two-tailed test, like this one, right, you would not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so sometimes the critical value approach is a little confusing. So usually what you do is you get the p-value, okay, of the test. So um, let's go back to StackCrunch, okay, and let's open up our results again. Okay, so the p-value of the test was 0 0.0224. Okay, so the p-value All right, so once you have the p-value, you compare it to the significance level. Okay, so according to the problem, the significance level was uh, 0 0.09. Okay, so since our p-value is less than the significance level of 0 0.09, all right, we reject the null hypothesis. Okay. Now if your p-value had, had been greater than or equal to 0 0.09, then you would fail to reject the null hypothesis. But in, in, in either case, right, whether you use a critical value approach or the p-value approach, right, you will still you, you will still get the same conclusion that there's sufficient evidence to reject the claim that there is no difference in the percent of females who are enrolled in college compared to the percent of males who are also enrolled in college. Okay. So thank you for watching.